Um, my name is Marcelo Cambedos. I'm the CEO and founder of Ipsy. And uh, I'm going to talk to, to you today about how to win friends and influence people on YouTube. So before I do that, I, I wanted to tell you a very quick story about how my career got started in online video and celebrities with a crack. Um, and uh, I was hired uh, to, was one of the first few employees at Funny or Die to help Will Ferrell launch and grow Funny or Die. And one of the first things I was tasked with was giving a presentation to the board of directors, which I had a week to do. So of course I researched the most important things, which were all the Will Ferrell movies. So I started, um, you know, I had watched Old School, but I was a little uh, nervous because I hadn't watched a lot of his other movies like Anchorman, Talladega Nights, uh, a lot of the SNL skits. So um, I really didn't want to confuse one of his quotes for another lesser comedian. So um, I got to the board meeting and I felt really comfortable with my quotes. And um, I got up to get some coffee. And as I was getting up, um, Adam McKay, who's Will Ferrell's writing partner, sat down on my laptop and totally crushed it and my presentation with it. So it wasn't, it wasn't a great start to my uh, Hollywood career. Um, but things improved a lot afterwards, and uh, I learned a ton. And one of the things I learned was how to leverage celebrities to build communities, and how to take what a celebrity represents as a moral guiding compass for building a community. In the case of Will Ferrell and Funny or Die, that really meant smart, edgy comedy. In the case of Ipsy, our company, and our co-founder, Michelle Phan, that means personal beauty and self-expression. Working with a celebrity can be tremendously, tremendously rewarding. And working with a YouTube personality actually offers two distinct advantages over working with a YouTube personality, over working with a traditional celebrity. Number one, there's a different level of authenticity when working with a YouTube personality. So the fans perceive it in a different way. They, they feel a difference. They feel, they feel like a distance from a traditional celebrity, whereas with a YouTube personality, they almost feel like it's a good friend or a big sister or a big brother. And um, part of that is because YouTube personalities are not just talent, they're also social media experts. So they're constantly on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, even when you're talking with them, and I've talked with many of them now, um, they're not really looking at you, they're on, uh, on Instagram or, or Facebook and responding to people. And what that, as a business person, what that means is it means really much higher conversion rates and much higher click-through rates whenever they make a post. The second big advantage of working with a YouTube personality is that they own their, own, their main distribution channel. So when you're working with a traditional celebrity, if, they, if you want them to distribute anything through their main channel, which might be a TV show or a movie, you need to do a deal with that TV show or movie, or you know, if it's a commercial, you're going to need to buy airspace for it. With a, with a YouTube personality, you don't need to do that. So what I want to talk to you a little bit about is why it makes sense to work with YouTube personalities and how you can work with YouTube personalities, too, in your business. But before I do that, I really wanted to see if I could get just a little bit of audience participation. So um, if you don't mind humoring me, we'd love to see a, a show of hands for anybody who has a company Facebook page. So what is a company Facebook page? Most of you, other people are just, keep, it, keep them up, keep them up, please. Other people are just checking their, their email, which is fine too. Um, keep your hands up. If you also have a company YouTube channel, okay, so many of you also have a YouTube channel. And keep them up if you've uploaded at least one video to that YouTube channel in the last month. Okay, you have, 500 has, good. Um, and then finally, keep your hands up if you've worked with a YouTube personality. Okay, so a few of you, all right, good. Um, and so many of you have company Facebook pages. Most of you also have YouTube channels. Some of you are, are frequently updating, but very few have worked with a YouTube personality. And to me, this presents what I'm calling the YouTube marketing conundrum, because I thought it sounded good. And um, what does this mean? This means that your customers are on YouTube. I just saw this, this statistic from eMarketer, and it shows 68% of 14 to 34 year olds are checking YouTube reg regularly, and fewer than that are checking Facebook regularly. So only 66% are checking Facebook regularly. And then it drops far below that for iTunes, Instagram, and Twitter. So they're on YouTube. Now here's the problem. They, they don't want to see anything about you. They don't want to see your branded content on YouTube. 
So 55% of them are okay and, and are, are, are encouraging you to communicate with them on Facebook, but only 20% of them want to see your stuff on YouTube. And here's where a YouTube personality can really bridge that gap, and they can take, they can help you reach your customers where they are already, which is on YouTube. So what I wanted to talk to you about is, um, hopefully I've kind of convinced you that it makes sense to work with YouTube personalities. What, what I wanted to, to talk about next was how some brands, give you some idea of how some other brands have been using YouTube personalities and working with YouTube personalities. Then uh, tell you a bit about how Ipsy works with YouTube personalities um, with some specific data points. And then finally talk specifics about how you can also work with YouTube personalities, how you can contact them and how you can start working with them. So what I have here is um, a standard marketing cycle, awareness, evaluation, purchase, service, and loyalty. And starting with awareness, um, this one is an example that's pretty well known, so some of you may have heard about it already, or a brush. It's a tongue cleaner. So uh, not a lot of people wake up thinking that they really need a tongue cleaner. Um, some people do, but not a lot of people do. And so what the Orange Brush people were having trouble with is it's a great product, and once people try it, it's great. But they couldn't get that need. They, they didn't have, people didn't think of it, and they, they, weren't, they didn't have that awareness that it was even an issue. They had tried many different channels, including infomercials, and nothing had worked. And then they kind of found, found like a little gold mine on YouTube. What they did is they created a very smart campaign around stinky onion breath, and uh, reached out to some of the top YouTube personalities at the time and gave them a lot of creative freedom within some guidelines of, of course, using their product, showing it on screen, and talking about stinky onion breath. And it was really a comedic stint to what they were, trying to, what, what they were doing, and it was super successful. So they had a, a, almost all of those YouTube personalities that they contacted ended up doing a video. And if you look at their page now, they have about 50 top, top YouTube personalities that have created video and helped them grow their business. So much so that they, they, they got a couple of national retail contracts out of all this, this exposure. Speaking of national retailers, national retailers are way into the YouTube game at this point, and especially those that are in competitive categories like fashion or shoes or beauty. And one of the main ways that they do this and some of you may have seen these videos, are haul videos. So what they do is they pay YouTube style or beauty bloggers to um, talk about how they just went shopping and talk about where they bought stuff. So it might be, hey, I got these shoes at JCPenney's or I got this skirt at Target. And with a call to action to go to those sites or to go to that retail location. And these, these promotions are becoming much, much more prevalent and in some cases, they're the main promotion, for example, in the back to school months. Now this is a, a tricky one. This is one that a lot of us as business people are tempted to start with. I want them to buy my stuff. Um, but I would caution from actually starting with purchase. Um, Aeropostale is a company that is actually, I found out recently, I didn't know this, but it's doing very poorly. Um, but they just did a, a collaboration that's, I think, really worth mentioning. So they did a collaboration with a young woman by the, who's 18 by the name of Bethany Moda, who actually doesn't live that far from here. And Bethany's one of the top style bloggers. She um, and Aero Style created what, what they're calling the Bethany Moda Collection. And in the last earnings report, which was last week, they announced that they were going to sell over $50 million in revenue just for this collection in 2014, and it, that it's by far their best-selling collection. Service. BH Cosmetics, a recent entry into the cosmetics world, has worked a lot with us, with Ipsy, and it's been very smart about how their approach to YouTube. They, um, they started working with smaller YouTube personalities in the 10 to 50,000 subscriber range. And what they did is, whenever you bought something, if you wanted to see how to use it, they would have videos on their site featuring YouTube personalities showing you how to use their products. Now this got them a few things. Of course it got them a better service experience for their customers, but it also got them a ton of awareness because all these videos were featured on the YouTube uh, influencers' channels. And, um, and, and importantly, it also got them an in into the YouTube community, and now they're doing, with two of those YouTube influencers, they're doing bigger collections. And then finally, another uh, a customer of Ipsy that's doing very well is Nix. Nix, two years ago, was probably um, 
really focused on, on the professional space. And um, they weren't very well known. YouTube really changed that for them. And they put together a very smart, one of the ways they did it, they put together a very smart promotion to find the next beauty blogger for Nix. They called it the Nix Face Awards. They started in 2012. It became a hugely successful award that every beauty blogger wanted to participate and win. And what you want is you want an ambassadorship to Nix. Um, and it was super successful. And what, in 2013, they were named the Women's Wear Daily brand of the, Beauty Brand of the Year. Ipsy loves YouTube influencers. We use them in every single part of the marketing cycle, and we think about our company as really part of the YouTube ecosystem. Um, the, the first place that we think about them is we think about them as part of the service experience. So our main service right now is providing a glam bag, which is a, a subscription service where you pay $10 a month for a cute beauty bag with five beauty products inside it for $10 a month. So this, is, this subscription model is something that's been done for maybe 10, 20 years, and there's a lot of competitors out there. What's unique about what we do is that those five beauty products make up a look, and that, th that look is recreated by 25 top stylists on YouTube. So every month, you can participate along with these top stylists who you love and with the same products that they're using in their videos. And that's when it gets started. That's kind of where everything gets started. And then um, not only do you get those 25 stylists creating videos, but everybody who's watching those videos creates their own version of those looks. So our own Ipsters who are paying subscribers to our product are also promoting the service by recreating the looks that these top stylists are, 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 are doing. So we have over 1,700 videos a month by these um, community members who are subscribers. All of these videos generate over 6 million views, which is not only great for us in driving subscribers, but it's great for our brand partners and allows us to get product for amazing merchandising that none of our competitors can get. Valuation is an interesting one because in the traditional press, including, and here I'll include also traditional online press, we're rarely mentioned. You may have not heard of Ipsy. Um, but in some ways, it doesn't matter too much to us because we're, we're the queen on YouTube. We have over 375,000 um, YouTube results if you search for Ipsy or Glam Bag, which is more than all of our competitors combined. And then finally, purchase. Just on YouTube alone, across all those videos, we send 100,000 leads to our brand partners. And that does include all the activity that happens on ipsy.com. So why does this matter? Um, and hopefully it serves as somewhat inspiration for any of you that have companies that are reaching the 14 to 34 demographic. We've been able to grow our business. We've been profitable for a year, have not raised a lot of money, and have gone from zero to well over 300,000 subscribers and on our way to a million subscribers in the near future with no marketing spend. So great, okay, hopefully maybe you're interested in doing this, but how do you get started and what's, what's the first step that, that, that you would take if you wanted to do this? And um, first step is, of course, decide on your marketing objective. What is it, what part of the market cycle, marketing cycle do you wanna live in? And I think here's where I would caution again away from purchase, and unless you're already very experienced in YouTube, some good places to start is, well, if it's a competitive category, service or evaluation might be a good place to start. If it's something new, like let's say relatively new, like Fitbit, maybe you want to generate awareness for the category. Um, if you just want to get your feet wet, loyalty might be a good place to start with some kind of contest. And purchase is very, very powerful, and it's worked out great for us. And I think it works best when you tie it in with another part of the marketing cycle like service. Once you do this, this is where you go home and you do whatever you do to get really creative and you um, think of different activations. Is it gonna be a comedy? Is, it gonna, is this gonna be all about comedy? Is it gonna be about cost marketing? Is it gonna be about how to? What is it that, that's gonna be, that's gonna get, really get those, give those YouTube influencers something to work with in some way that they can really work with your product and make it look great? Thirdly, and this is a really tricky one, is find the right influencers. Here's where it's not about going and looking for all of the top influencers. It makes a big difference to find the right ones. Um, this will depend on what kind of activation you're looking for. So you'll have to decide, hey, do I want many? Do I want a few? Do I just want to work with one? It's also going to depend on your budget. 
um, once a few ways that you can find them is one, there's a, uh, there's a few sites out there that catalog the YouTube influencers. One's called VidStatsX, another one's called Social Blade, um, and then there's, there's companies uh, that have consulting services that can help you with this, like VidIQ or Tubular Labs. And of course, YouTube search is a good place to get started. They're pretty good at search over there. So you can, you can it's going to take a lot of work. You're going to have to look, watch a lot of YouTube videos, but maybe you can get somebody who's really passionate about that just watching videos all day. Um, making contact, it's easy to find emails for these influencers. Go to their YouTube, main YouTube channel, and you can usually find them. It's much harder to get them to respond to you. If they smell anything like a form letter, that's going to go directly into the trash. So one, you, you want to make sure that those emails clearly state out what you're, what you're going to do for them. Are you going to pay them? Are you going to give them free product? What is it that you're going to do for them? Um, what you're expecting from them. And also really establishes your credibility. Because some of them get hundreds or more of these requests every single week. So let's say you found the right influencers. How do you close a deal with them? Well, first, decide on the type of deal that makes sense. And then there's... There's two parts of that. One, is it a short-term or a long-term deal? And then, is it just a video, or are we talking about a much bigger campaign that includes all their social media, or appearances, or something else? This is really important and, and, and really tricky, because this is where, for example, Aura Brush was very successful. Decide what those videos will look like. If you are too constrictive of what those videos look like, those videos might never get done, or if they get done, um, they, 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 they might get done in a way that actually doesn't work for the influencers, and they might even take them down because they're not getting a good response. So I think here what you want to do is create a, do a creative brief with the main talking points that you really want in there, but be about a lot more lenient about, what, about their creative freedom around it. And then third, determine the appropriate compensation. Um, is it, is it going to be equity? It's, that might be the case if it's just one or two. Is it going to be cash? What I would say here is everybody wants things to be CPA or percentage of what you make. That's not going to work in the YouTube world unless they know they have some kind of base fee or at least a CPM or something that they can get their hands around. They're probably not going to want to work with you. Some potential pitfalls real quick. Um, these are not ads. And if they're ads, they're not going to be successful. They really have to be driven by content and storytelling and not your product specs. Secondly, and this is going back to the authentic fit with influencers, you might have somebody that has a million subscribers or a million views or 10 million subscribers, but if they're not the right subscribers and if they're not positioning your brand in the appropriate way, you're not gonna get anything out of it. So focus on the ones that really work for your brand and that are really gonna get behind you. Thirdly, ensure that the relationship is mutually beneficial. There's things that you might be able to do like promote them on, across your email or your website that could really help them as well. And then fourth, don't under underestimate how much time and commitment this, this takes. You can get started pretty easily. Um, but in our case, we have 15 people who are fully dedicated in a studio in LA to creating these videos and, and, and following up with these YouTube personalities. And then finally, if you have a meeting with Will Ferrell and Adam McKay, do not leave your laptop on the chairs. So um, that's it. If, I don't know if anybody, do we have time for questions? One question. You know, I'm a little bit less familiar. What's that? Yes. Does this work with other? I just heard the term Vine celebrities actually for the first time the other day. I and somebody said, they're an old time manager. It's like there's no such thing as Vine celebrities. I don't know if that's true. I tend to agree that YouTube is different. I mean, because it is, it's a richer media. It's it's. But I could be wrong. I, I we work with a lot of Instagram personalities and that have big followings. And it's the same. I mean, it's the same in the sense that you're working with an influencer. So you can work with a Vine influencer. You can work with an Instagram influencer. You can work with a YouTube influencer. I think the difference is that the message that, you can, that can come across in video, and um, I think Harvey mentioned this, is a lot richer because you have just more time to explain it. So I think that that's the main difference. But I think the, the points really are valid across all kinds of um, uh, social channels. Yes?
Click-through rates are very high. Conversion rates, not as high. And conversion rates really, really will depend on finding the right influencers. And what YouTube is also very international. So um, if it's a, you know, the, the products that lend themselves for conversions might be things like an app. You know, if you have app installs, that could be a great thing to convert. Um, things that cost money, they're still, you know, it still tends younger. So if it's an expensive product, it might not be a, a good fit, you know. Um, but what I can tell you is click-through rates can be very high. I mean, they can be up to 20%. They can be anywhere in the 10 to 20% range. Conversions, it will really depend on the, on, on the product and the fit with, with a specific influencer. Thank you.